had people in ballrooms who have done some incredible things with their lives. Um, if you want to talk about the Jay Blonics, and you want to talk about the Jason Prodigies, and you want to talk about Kareem, I don't know where, I can't remember what, do you remember what house Kareem was in? I'm Revlon. so sorry. Um, Kareem Revlon? Uh, Kareem is now a, a hairstylist in L.A., and he does a lot of popular people's hair. I cannot think of what house he came from. But there are a lot of people who took their house time seriously as young people, right? But you grow up, and you mature, and you do something with your life. So I don't know that, you know, we should be as concerned. You know, like, as, as older people, yes, we want to lead them in the right way. And I feel like the older people in the ballroom say that is our job, because that's what the more mature people in the ballroom say did for us. That's what we do. We plant the seeds. We don't judge them for where they are because we were all there, right? We were right. all there. So you let them have their fun and you let them, you know, ingratiate in it or overdo it, right, as children. But letting them right. know, like, you can't make this your life, boo. Right. Do something outside of this How and make a life for yourself. Yeah. So I don't want to really discourage them from getting involved and maybe being engulfed a little bit. But at the same time, knowing that it, there's a time and a place for everything. And as you grow in the school, you want to be able to take care of yourself and retire and have a life in your well, I can think of some positive examples of what you're saying. Like, I do believe that the, the young kids, the next generation after us, are getting it. I can take and use, for an example, a couple people. But oh, Kamar, Kamar. Kamar. Kamar, exactly. Kamar is doing something. He's doing international dance now, uh, traveling all over the world as a choreographer. I'm very proud of him. He, he's, he's done from the prestige. And then also you've got uh, the runway the, the runway kid, uh, Eric Velour. He's um, he's modeling in, in top magazines and, and doing photo shoots with some of the best photographers, photographers in the industry now. So he learned his lesson. He also studied from the House of Prestige. If you want to talk about Blonick, you look at the and, – and then even more rare, the ladies – from the House of Blonic on a uh, dance studios in West Philadelphia. Uh, what's her name? Monique, the runway child. She owns a, a dance studio over here in, uh, in, in, in West Philadelphia. You got Jay doing his music thing. You got Fuzzy who is, um, is, 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 is like this big wig in the community service and, and HIV education now. Like, come on, there are people doing different things. You don't forget Pony. Pony went all crazy television and everything with his yeah. choreography. Yeah. Like, and then, then um, a bunch, all of the models, look at, look at, um, um, what's her name? Oh, my God. Look at Lovely Right Now. Lovely Right Now is over there shooting for one of them people in uh, Miami on magazine covers all over and killing it yeah. as, nice. a, as a model. Like, she's killing She walked one ball. You hear me? She walked one ball. Got her 10, and when we was leaving out that night, I think it was the Colors Ball, we left out that night, somebody hit her up right there on the spot, and that, and that girl been traveling ever since. So they are getting it. The opportunities are there. You understand? We just have to make sure that the next generation are educated and motivated to get it. It's out there. Let's get it. Wow. That's all. Know that's but right. know what you know. Ballroom is, is not just about a trophy like like uh, Larry was saying earlier. It's not just about a trophy. Ballroom, the training that you can get in ballroom can catapult your career if you do it the right way and if you take it seriously. Use your ballroom time as a training ground. That's what I did. I thought to a train. I'm writing books now. Alvernian trained me on how to be a marketer, a promoter, and a prolific speaker. Thank you very much. I said it myself. I know, that's he right. trained me. I would not. I would not have known how to talk right now uh, had it not been for him. I would not have known that had it not been for what he taught me. When he taught me how to go out and promote and advertise, and that's the honest truth. Wow, amazing. And can we address ballrooms' uh, influence on our culture as a whole? Yes. Can we discuss that? Sure. Of course we Go can. Go for it. Ballroom has, if people knew how much an influence the ballroom community uh, of the smaller community, but the LGBT community, what an influence this culture has on our culture. Language, dress, dance, makeup, hair, all of that. Ballroom. You walk down any street and anywhere in this country, and you are going to see a girl with her eyelashes done, her makeup contoured, her hair to her behind, ballroom. 
Absolutely. I, I was just on the radio. Had... Ballroom. Yeah. Television. Ballroom. Like this so ballroom, ballroom. Ballroom. everything. Ballroom everywhere. Ballroom mania, huh? Yeah. But we just don't know it. We don't know it. But we don't know that uh, the overall community, the industry community, they don't know that that's where they're getting their influences in their music and their culture and their language and their hair and their clothes. They do something about it. Aren't, aren't people refusing to give marriage licenses? Hello. Yeah, that is so true. If that we so realized how heavily we were influenced by the community, honey, it would change. But you know what, Stephanie? An eye-opening, um, if I if I could just plug some something for, for, for somebody, but it was eye-opening, and it was actually very educational and true. If you could check out my man, uh, Derek Murphy's um, uh, Ballroom 101 uh, Symposium, you know, that he launched in New York, what, about two years ago or something like that? That is an excellent, excellent reference in history, historical uh, compilation of how ballroom affects major society. He went back to the earliest date, I believe, was 1904. He went back to the earliest date of, ball, of the influence that ballroom has had on our community from 1904 to present. And it was an excellent, an excellent exhibit. So if you don't know, look up Derek Murphy, Ballroom History 101. Look it up on YouTube or whoever, or whoever. It's an excellent presentation. It's an excellent educational tool. I recommend it. I really, really do. Yeah. Now, how do you feel ab about others, you know, referring ballroom scene to franchise? Mm. You said franchises? Yes. Yes. So, are you saying the ballroom is going to be franchised, or the no. house is going to be franchised? Well, so, well, according 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 to other ballroom radio stations on the net, uh, you know, where they're saying that ballroom scene has become a franchise. How do you feel about that? Now these are these are you know Ooh. high high people in the ballroom community that are seeing this on their shows. Ooh. So let me ask you uh, when you when you say that because I don't I'm, I'm trying to get clarity on what that statement means because I don't know if that is uh, trying to um, insinuate that ballroom the ballroom community is selling out to community service agencies. Well, no, that's well, that yeah, getting. such. Okay. Well, well, from my understanding, how I feel about it is, you know, stuff such as, you know, anybody that you know has done anything from ballroom and took it outside of ballroom, whether it was fashion or dancing or writing a book or uh, producing a radio station, you know, uh, is is a franchise. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. I don't know. I'm gonna let Stephanie handle that one. I I, I really don't have anything to say. Wow. On that one. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Um, Do you hear me biting my tongue? That doesn't happen very often, Izzy. Just so you know. Um. <laughs> oh, wow. Houses is a franchise. Right. Um. You know, such well, we have you know it's we we have Madonna's Vogue video, we have yes, Paris yes, is I mean, Burning, we have How Do I Look, we have. If, you, if we ask the question, has ballroom been? I feel like I feel like my personal opinion um, is that ballroom has been perverted. Um, it's been stolen, but that's kind of what happens to minorities. Um, and that's kind of what ha has happened to us from the beginning of time. It had, you know, it hasn't just started. But yes, they take what belongs to ballroom and they make money off of it. If we're discussing it, discussing it in that manner, um, when I think of a franchise, I, th you know, I'm a sports girl, so I think about sports and sports teams, and you know, sports teams being franchises, and that the owners of those teams benefiting from the team. So I'm trying to clarify if you mean it that way or do you mean the perversion of ballroom by the upper society? <laughs> well, well, I, I I didn't mean it anyway. I wasn't the one who said it. Oh, but, you're just asking a general question for me to figure out and decide how I want to answer. I'm just asking, no, I'm just asking you how do you feel about, you know, people saying that, you know, about, you know, the community right. all, all, I, all on its own. 
That's a, t- that's yeah. a tough one. Um, it is tough. It is tough. Yeah, that's a tough yeah. one because I don't know personally anyone who um, does this for profit, right? I don't know anyone who does it that way. So it's hard for me to say that it doesn't happen because I don't know anyone who does that. The people who I know that do it, they do it for the love of what they do. Um, and most of them don't profit from it, especially not today. The market is saturated. There could be eight balls in a single weekend all over the country. You are not having a thousand people show up to a ball anymore unless you are particular balls. And it's maybe two or three of them a year. Um, but, you know, I don't know that, that, you know, from my experience, I don't know how true that is. Wow. Yeah, I feel it's a little well, contradicting. That's just how I feel. But moving along. Well, no, it's fine. No, because, I mean, if you're talking about that, like, you guys weren't talking about, but if you're talking about um, a house being uh, sponsored by a particular agency, let's just give an example. Let's say the house of um, Blonick got sponsored by Southwest um, Airlines. Okay, and and so that house, if they wanted to travel wherever to any ball, would be able to fly Southwest for free or at a discounted rate. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Right. That, or, it wouldn't or, be for that or, house, that's for sure. Or the latex ball being sponsored by GMHC. Right, and I understand that there's a lot of controversy about that, but when you put the, the latex ball is sponsored by GMHC, right? What are the people who go to it for free losing? Doesn't it benefit? Doesn't it bring people together? Right. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just asking a question. Right. So in I other don't words, In other words, we should concentrate more on, you know, uh, you know, shaping the foundation instead of worrying about, you know, um, unnecessary things. That's how I feel about it. I think it's just unnecessary. Right. Like, there are bigger yeah. things to worry about. Okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, we can we can put anything under a microscope, and we don't like putting things under a microscope, because that's kind of what everybody does to us, right? Right, right. right. I told you. I told you. We'd be coming to the presser. I'm going to be quiet. I'm not going to say that no more. Okay, great, great. So what can we expect with this new series that you have going on? Well, we, um, well, as far as work is concerned and as far as, you know, um, doing business behind the scenes, because everything for our community isn't done out in the open and in front of the spotlight. I prefer now, I, I used to be that spotlight person. Now I'm behind the scenes because that's where the real battles goes on. So I can't wait to go to um, L.A. next month and participate in another credentialing uh, project that I'm just, you know, going to talk about a little bit later which is going to be in my my book. But the second book is coming out um, <clears throat> probably on the anniversary that the first one was in March. But the next thing for us is going to be the book selling at the African American Museum on the 29th, which is Sunday. And time will be announced, right, Stephanie? Two to five. Two to five. Thank you. So PM that's the next thing. November 29th, Sunday. Yes. Now, if anything, to be honest with you, I would hope that people that hear this radio station and would like to 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 uh, speak their mind or if I said something that they want to talk about, please come. Come. Get the book. If you don't have the book, you can get the book on Amazon.com. You can get the book at Barnes & Noble. You can get the book at Balboa Press. Or you can come to the book signing and get your book and an autographed copy Um and, and a discussion, a question and answer discussion, maybe a picture, whatever, with me. Like, I'm really interested in getting feedback because this is important great. to me. This is like my life's work. Put these books out because this is real. And I want, I can't do it without you. I need us all to be a part of this. I need us all to be a part of this and re-educating ourselves and empowering ourselves so that we can do better. If we think better, we'll do better, we'll be better. And that's what it's all about, man. I don't. I want all. Everyone is invited. Everyone from whatever perspective that you come to, come. You know, because as we grow spiritually, if you take away the the, the hierarchies and and the statuses and all of that, we're all equal. We're all on the same plane. We all are human. 